right, everybody. Welcome back to the Urban Hermit Podcast. Cameron Jones here with my luscious co-host. I think, luscious. I, I think he's talking to you. I don't think it's it was me. I didn't think it was me either, but yeah, Mark Nussel. That's... Uh, Jordan Jones and my and my scrumptious co-host. Scrumptious, I, I think it's still talking to you, Mark. <laughs> Whoever wants. <laughs> I don't to take think the it's me. Uh, I'm Jordan Jones. I'm here to uh, another here week to of uh, Urban Hermit Podcast. Another week of not leaving our house as much. So um, just off the top, there was like an ice storm the other day. Did anyone like go outside at all? Uh, which day was I, that? Uh, I think you're just describing. It was literally winter. yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, it was, yesterday. It was like raining all day, and then it froze overnight. So, uh, like, this was actually pretty crazy. I was about to go to a Mark's for band practice. We ended up calling it off because, like, the roads were shit. But, like, there was a straight-up, like, sheet of ice around my car that I tried pulling the door handle. And, like, I leaned back, and nothing moved. And I was like, oh, shit. And I had to give it some, like, strong yanks before, like, a sheet of ice just fell off my car. There crazy. are two things that I th – three things I think of when that happens. One, mm -hmm. uh, anytime my car is iced over and it looks like it's a clear liquid layer, um, sorry, clear liquid, uh, Jesus, I'm having a <laughs> mental breakdown right now. I know we're not video, but <laughs> sure if you could are. describe the way I look, um, when there's like a clear coating, it makes me think of the Batman and Robin, the Joe Schumacher ones, like everybody okay. freeze. Everybody freeze. I know you're talking, which did lead me to a question. What are some just like memorable icy moments for you guys? Slippery roads, whatever, wh whatever it may be. Um, I think Cameron, you can relate to this anytime in the winter back in the day, the 2000, 1998 Ford Contour oh, is just like uh, blowing like dust in the wind. There's no traction. Slipperiest car in the world. Probably should have waited it down with something. Sure, really. It was a very light car. The tires were almost completely bald. So, like, any time in winter, you were just whipping around corners. It was dangerous. I doubt that we and also ever on top got of that, those just tires replaced from the time it was bought it. to the time you had it was, <laughs> like, seven years later. To, to make things a little crazier, Mike, Mark, you may remember, we grew up out on the country, and we had, like, a lane leading up to the highway that was elevated. So if that had, like, any ice at all... You had to like oh. gain speed and just pray that there was nobody coming. It was not. Or you it wasn't nice, but down. me and my dad went into the ditch because uh, of a foggy situation. <laughs> oh yeah, I do recall that. We just turned too early and went right that. into the ditch. Actually, yeah, we had a tough turn in. We lived in a little cul-de-sac, but in the country, and it was mm -hmm. uh, a tree-lined lane, gravel lane, and uh, because Mark's dad went into the ditch, we got reflectors on where to turn. There it made it really easy for me to describe sure it. Like did. you see, you see the reflectors. Just take a left there, getting dropped Cameron, off by like, people's parents. I feel like we might have the same story of, 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 an, icy, of an icy moment. What's that? Uh, oh, going to that show? No. Well, oh, man. that was. Well, you, you can tell that one. I'll tell this one. It was the uh, – you've talked about people squatting at your house before. You know, you welcome squatters. Sure, I, this is, oh, but you've been there for many squatters as well. Don't well, act like you okay. are a, a party. Well, he had a home uh, to go to, though. He wasn't a squatter. <laughs> this is when Chris right. sort of came back to uh, stay at your place before we moved to Chicago. And oh, in high school, right? Yes, right, right. and it was uh, we were going out to let's just say travel the roads for a little bit, and uh, we were going up this hill. <laughs> Take a on, trip, uh, if you will. It was a gravel road, sure, on the road, um, and it was icy as, as get out. And there was a car behind us, and we were trying to get up this this hill, and all of a sudden we just stopped. We couldn't we couldn't go any further. We just go, started going backwards, and like I think we were all screaming like back up back up to the car behind us and like we just ben i think ben was driving and he kind of uh yeah our good around. friend ben so i don't that's he, my yeah, he just like jacked he jacked knife in reverse and like completely righted the car and ended up like saving it but we were like oh shit just like sliding down the hill but fun fun after that though we realized how icy it was and we drove to the top of it and we just ended up gliding down this like gravel hill but it was a complete smooth like sheet of ice so we were just going down on our feet and if you remember, Chris broke his, Chris got, yeah, he broke his glasses. Chris, Chris got turned around and totally douched and broke his glasses on the hill. And it was like his first night back in Manchester from South Carolina. It was a, it was a terrible welcome back. You know back. what makes me sad? Uh, growing up back in the day, if it was icy, if it was foggy, if there was heavy snow, we'd get a two-hour delay, start school two hours early. True. We'd get early dismissal. They're like, it's just going to get dangerous today. Or they'd straight up cancel it. I heard recently, uh, or during this pandemic, because kids uh, remote learn now, Rather than canceling mm. school, they're like, nope, we're just doing a remote day. So, like, school days off have kind of disappeared in the rural area. Right. It's not It's not a day off now. It's a remote day just since we're so they're so good at it now. Um, that makes what, me what sad. Is, what would you prefer? Is it, like, I know what I'd prefer, a two-hour delay or, a, or an early dismissal? 
Early dismissal. There's so much Absolutely. joy in it. Absolutely. You know? Oh, yeah. There, Especially because there's a good, like, it could happen early in the day, too, you know? Like, you can, you can get a lot of day after yeah. that. I, I think I, you know, I hugged a teacher once. It's like, I can't believe I'm getting out early. <laughs> this is the best. Although, I do have one really oh, cool experience. I'm sure I told you this. I did uh, in middle school. This is the the maybe purest joy I've ever seen in human, in, like, in, in, in common human folk. <laughs> we had early practice. Sure. I'm sure you guys had early practice for something before school, whether it be band or sports. Mine was like oh, seventh man. grade basketball. basketball, right? So we went to basketball, and everybody assumed that school was going to happen afterwards. But all of a sudden, over the announcement, uh, the PA system at school, they're like, school is canceled. Go home. Call your parents. Whatever. So we were about right. done with practice. People were kicking balls. We were cheering like we were. It was like VE day, like victory in yeah. Europe. Like there was nobody to kiss, you know. But had there been, I would have, you know. And it was the happiest day. All of a sudden, we got a free, you know, a, a, a snow day. And do you want one of the most beautiful moments of this whole scenario is when you wake up and you realize, like, oh, it's like eight thirty-five. Like I should be at school, so clearly. Oh like, yeah, I, yeah. I've been, I've been. They, I've been. They let my mom let we, me sleep. We had, in a, this we had a gem like, of a mom. Mark, did you have to wake up on your own? Did your mom? Did she work during the day? So was it just up to you to wake up and go to school, or did she wake you up? She, uh, she, she left around the same time I did. So oh, like so she, she, she'd make sure I was up. Nice. I was uh, not a my morning mom, person. Our mom was there to make sure I left for school, or I wouldn't. I would just sleep in. And boy, howdy, did I? Do you know like, what the flip side of oh, that I, coin is, though? Going to bed being exactly. like, oh, the, the, the weather caster said, the, the, the weather person said, it's going to be a foot of snow tomorrow. Two feet of snow, and you wake up, and it's like, ball me out. Nothing. You're like, fuck. Oh. There's nothing more disappointing when you've banked hard on there not being school, didn't do your homework, not ready for a test, just stayed up crazy late, and then you find out, yeah, like nothing happened, like a light spritz. That's when you wake up and go to mom. It's like, mom, I can't go. I didn't do anything last night. Oh, yeah. I thought that we were going to have school. Everybody thought they said that it was going to snow. I, I don't have any homework done. There's oh, there's nothing more suspenseful than like turning on KCRG TV nine and watching that ticker go by and just seeing oh. the W's get West Delaware and you're like oh fuck yeah that's another thing just, why well, I'm, I'm not sure I'm glad we grew up the way I'm not we sure did. how schools oh. what's yeah. great about this is I'm cutting you now. off the whole yeah. time but it doesn't matter I'll let somebody make a point now <laughs> well I'm not editing after so it does we'll still be talking oh, on top of each other I've later. been made a fool of no kids now just yeah. get texts whether or not school is canceled. Yeah, which I mean, at least they get like instant gratification. But just the, the the suspense of watching the schools go by on the news scroll, those kids will never know the the, 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 the just how the much it hurts. The anticipation if you, you moved, your, missed your school, it's like shit. I gotta wait ten minutes now to go through every school in the area and the viewing area. <laughs> You kind of so I was thinking, you'd expect sorry ahead. you kind of expect it during the winter like you know a storm's coming through you'd have a couple of days of anticipation but the random like mm-hmm. spring fog day. Do you remember that Piece one de time? Resistance. Do you know there was like a blizzard where we're like Mark and I we we're at band practice in like our high school band practice spot so it was like our friend's house but like we went there at six and then like eight o'clock their parents were like it's not safe you guys can't leave school got canceled three days in a row so we just had this awesome just like. Slumber party, like high school slumber party with our com- friend and like in a I band. I completely relate to that. I came back from college, like right when I moved to Chicago. We all went to like Brian Bradley's house and it was Christmas break, but there was an awful snowstorm. So we literally got stuck at his house for three days just with like his parents and a sister. So Did you say first- snore storm? That's, Jesus that's Christ. oh, he sure That's what weird. happens uh, during sleepovers with me. It's like a big snore storm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry, go on. Go a on, big snowstorm happened. Like ice couldn't get out of their lane, couldn't get anywhere. Like uh, plow trucks weren't coming through yet. So the first night we mm-hmm. were just there, like drinking and like having fun. But then cabin fever could have set in. But we were just with his parents and stuff. Eventually the booze ran out, and we were just there for like three days. But the big part of the story is. Um, I didn't come home until Christmas Eve night or something, and mom and dad were real pissed at me. They're like, you better get home for Christmas, otherwise we're going to be super pissed. And I, I eventually did. I can imagine. Oh, I just thought of another kind of funny, like, ice story. So I was going to see, like, a high school girlfriend. He's talking about the like drug. A- he just like, yeah, we shot <laughs> ice. We were taking so much ice back in the day. No, I was is going ice, to see, like, a girl. Uh, is that meth? It sounds like a Coke thing to me, right? You know? Yeah, but frozen say. Coke, isn't that just meth? Oh, that's crack. Or crack, crack cocaine. Sorry. I was about to say, it's It'd like be crack, crack cocaine. cocaine. Thing. But I was, okay, so there was like a black ice warning, and I was like visiting a girlfriend during this, so like it was fine when I went. But and we I should explain black and... ice for people that aren't from places where ice is. It's just ice you can't see. It's invisible yeah, ice. It's just there's, everything there's no is coated in a, anything about it. It's not a black it. or white thing. No, it's, it's, yeah. just, it's just ice you can't see. 
So I was saying goodbye to her, and also she gave me a present. As you might know, I used to really like Skittles, so she gave me like a one pound bag of Skittles. So she like kissed me goodbye, and I turn around right as the door shuts, and like I swear it was like a comic, like just or like a cartoon. My feet just complete, yeah, completely slipped out and went uh, like up in the air. I land on my back. The pound bag of Skittles like burst and just goes all over the front yard. That's a a hard impact for for to burst from this plastic. Like that's hard. (laughs) Oh. And it, there was just embarrassing evidence all over. Yeah, so right. for days, I immediately like you know scurry up to see if she saw through like the glass door if like she shut it in time. No sight of her. So like I slide down to my car on like all fours because it's really slippery. And I did have to text be like, yeah, there's like thousands of skittles out front. That's me. <laughs> it wasn't because I didn't like your presence. It's because I took uh, a real. I immediately. <laughs> I took a spill. When's the last time? Maybe it's it's weird. I definitely fell more growing up. I don't feel like I fall very often anymore. And we're not to an advanced we're, we're stage ca- where we will fall again. When's the last time I'm you pretty took cautious a, a now, tough though. spill? It's been a while. I mean, I don't honestly. I, I bump into a lot of things. Like I'd say more like that. I stub knees and toes and like tough shoulders because I'm kind of yeah, it's been clumsy. But I haven't been like, a bit. Fallen. I have noticed this yeah, like, since I lost weight. I bumped in. I bump into way less shit because the mass of my body is smaller now. I think it's actually. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I definitely was more coordinated growing up when we played sports and stuff. I I think I've lost that body awareness. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely not as agile as I used to be, but like all I do is sit and like get up from seat to seat. So I mean, like of course I've lost. Uh, oh, it. but go to go back to either Mark's original question or Cameron's original story about a car being you know covered in ice. One of my favorite sure. things to do, and I do want to pass this along, before you scrape your window. Um, if you're, you know, where you live and it's cold and your, your car's covered in ice, take your hands like this and I'm showing Mark and Cameron and just go make an X and go Wolverine. Oh my God. And it's the funnest thing to do. <laughs> that's it, fun. It's yeah, really that's really fun, fun to do. I hope, I hope I can share that with people and they can take it with them. Do you guys have ice scrapers? Mm-hmm. So, sure do. you know, I mean, I assume you know what they look like. There's the sort of like serrated, there's the blade that you scrape the ice with. And then the opposite side, there's like this sort of bumpy ridged part. Mm-hmm. That I assumed wasn't anything. Turns out you, you're supposed to like score the ice with that and then scrape it off. Never done in my life. Yeah, I saw, Never done that in my life. Uh, you're saying loosen it up and then that. scrape? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Scratch in and then scrape off. I saw a bunch of TikTok videos of that and I'm like, oh, I've never done never it done that in my that life. That seems much easier. Do you know it's like what the I tongue scraper s- on the other. Sorry. You know what I've seen that I'd like to keep in my car? Uh, it seems like people with trucks have them because they're bigger. Mm hmm. A lot of the times you can just take a broom and that takes care of everything you need to take off your car. Like a literal like sweeping broom. <laughs> That's true. I'm telling you, it saves so there's much no, time. I've seen there's it. There's no seen... way 90% of the things that would have, like that I have to clean off my car, a broom would take care of. Well, not when you have to scrape, but when you just have to like dust off your car, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, it saves uh, yeah, if, I drive, if I was the driving a stuff. Model A, maybe. <laughs> Model A is just open to the... To, 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 to the uh, environment yeah you got to sweep out the snow from the in- inside yeah uh so also in recent news i finished my taxes last night and I, fi- I filed for two different llc's and boy is that annoying and this sounds I, okay. like an annoying topic to be honest well <laughs> here's my main point i hate how much specifically for me h&r block tries to upsell you especially because they know i'm like in putting in some like self-employment like company stuff so they're like oh you probably want like $180 for like some some expert to tell you that you only made like $200 off your business last year right I'm like no uh, it's, the upsell is just insane it's almost as much as I'm getting back so what's the point taxes scare me you know? incredibly so I'm not going to say anything on microphone <laughs> anything recorded about taxes I f- well that's fair we'll move on but if anyone from the IRS is listening just I, I try I think I, I Stop I think listening. I did it right. No, like and subscribe right. and share. We appreciate that you're listening and and all that. Uh, also, in today's news, I ju- I did a cover for for the band Highwire. Uh, we're doing a Highwire try social media thing, but uh, I sound an absurd amount like Cat Stevens when I'm trying. It turns out it's kind of crazy. Yeah, you should specify no, well, now we you were hear singing a, a Cat Stevens song. It's not like you were trying a different song. I mean, Mark do- wants a little. Let me let me try to pull this up real quick, but I'm kind of impressed with myself. Now I've been crying lately, thinking about the world as it is. <laughs> Why must we go on painting? Why can't we live in bliss? 
Did you do your own back rip? Yeah, I did. What do they say Work there? Is real slow. What do they say there? Because I'm on the edge of darkness. Yeah. Or because out on the edge of darkness. Resides a, little, a peace train. A little peace train there, huh? That's, that's about all there What's is to the, the song. It's about that peace keep train out there. Rolling slowly. You didn't play the instrumental, right? right? No, okay. I just did one of those programs that like strips the the, the vocals from oh, from cool. the uh, instrumental part. I don't have time for all that business, but I also did some REM, and it's not as good. But I think I can do a, a better REM impersonation than what I recorded. But we, we we won't play that one. So that's all. I've just been doing coverage today, pretty much. Um, I should do that to sh- to make you feel better about yours, because I can't sing or carry a tune. <laughs> but until we find the one person that you just murder, I don't think it, I don't think it's out there. Uh, let me think. Um, oh, Bob Dylan. He he doesn't really have to sing on key. Even though you, you had your sing on key, you had your famous Bane. I mean, it's more of an impression rather That's than that's true. A, a yeah, I, I have nailed an impression once. I can kind of do Gilbert so, Godfrey. But Cameron, but but Cameron texted <laughs> Cameron texted me P, the, his recording of Peace Train. And one thing I could tell in the recording was the pure joy you had singing that. I told I, I a big told smile him, on his face. I told him that if he ever gets in a Peter Pan situation where he needs to think of a happy thought to uh, to fly, that he could think of Peace Train and recording it or singing it. Just think of Harold and Maude. D- d- but Peace Train, correct me, that doesn't come up in the movie, right? In I the soundtrack no, no, for so. Harold and Maude? No, it nah, doesn't. It's all original stuff for the movie. It came up in Rem- Remember the Titans, though. That it sure does. And a lot of other soundtracks of like 60s stuff. I don't think Peace Train's in Remember the Titans. I think we're confusing no, it I with two. I definitely can guarantee it. No, it is. I'm pretty sure oh. it's when they're going to play basketball. In the cop pool. <laughs> I know the scene, like, but <laughs> I think it might be. I think it might Hold be on. like. I think it might CCR? be the, the something happened in here. I think it might be that. Nah, I'm, I'm almost positive it's Cat Stevens. It may be Cat uh, Stevens, perfect, but I don't think it's Peace Train. It's a perfect movie for Peace Train. I know. Yeah. But it, I just don't. We'll think look into this. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll back to this we'll for next week because it's gonna. I'm it's looking gonna it up right like now. Ten, Keep going, but gonna I'm gonna look ten this minutes up. of dead air. Okay, so, okay, I, so I, I have it, a topic that I want to. Sure. I, uh, this may work. This may not. Um, I don't think I've announced it on any social media platform, but uh, I'm going to have a kid in August, or Megan's going to have a kid. I'm going to get oh, wow. a kid in August. You so guys know you don't have to. You don't have to pretend about it. No, I'm just saying I didn't realize you were going to like like put it on put it on the pod. I knew you were going to have a kid. Well, I didn't know the word. This was announcement time. That's uh, yeah, it's a pretty weak announcement. I, I guess I'm not announcing it because you guys know. But one of the things I wanted to do was kind of like let let people know where I'm coming from. Um, okay. Right now, the baby is the size of a lemon. Oh, I do like that you've been giving me updates on what size fruit it is. Guess what? Last week it was the size of a lime, and now they're saying it's the size of lemons. So that feels like a lot of growth to me. And those seem about the same to me. I guess, yeah, that's, no, a, that's, a, lime, that's a little lime bigger. Cl- uh, lime, lime and a lemon, it's almost twice the size. That's what I thought, um, yeah. So I don't know. So they, What's they, that I'm, old saying? When life gives you lemons. You have the, a baby. Uh, we have a baby coming. <laughs> you have a ba- you have a lemon sized baby. Uh, are you guys gonna know the uh, the gender? Are you gonna have it be a surprise? Uh, gonna be surprised unless somebody that we see at a hospital lets it slip. Every time we go to the hospital, you see about six people. Oh hey, man, Maggie, Jordan, yeah. congratulations! So fine looking dick yeah, on that. I kind of want you to like, start a. I want you to start like a forest fire. You know how, the, how those guys like like, like shoot like. Uh, uh, it's like target the reveal surprise, just, yeah, like the big gender reveal that starts a forest fire. Oh, I mean, if if I start a forest fire, it's because it's the way I start any fire. I'm gonna fall asleep with a cigarette in my mouth, and uh, <laughs> a flames go. Um, no, we're not gonna have a gender reveal. Uh, we think that it's like one of the like real surprises you can have. Um, yeah, that's true. Well, that's what Megan thinks. I'm like, yeah, sure, that's fine. Besides, just having the damn thing. Yeah, no, like we know that's gonna happen. Um, anytime that Megan's like, oh, you know, voice is a concern. Should I be concerned about this? I'm like, people have toilet babies. We'll be fine. Like as long as we, <laughs> you know, true. like if people can go all the way through pregnancy, probably drink a lot. If you're having a toilet baby, you probably drink a lot and smoke a lot. On the- you'd assume you're not living the best lifestyle. Would yeah. you ever tell somebody, even if like? If you were, if you found out that you were a toilet baby, like your mom, like had you, and you're like, mm-hmm. I didn't know I was pregnant with you until you know, I was on the toilet. Yeah, I'll be honest. I hate that term. I just don't say it. Ever. Don't say it again. I just you said, said it three it a times. Bunch. Now. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sure Go back. Did. I don't know. I, this isn't good topics. Anyway, I'm excited <laughs> to have a kid. I'm pretty worried, and I'm going to keep people updated on how big it is. Right now, we're we're talking the size of a lemon. I love the size updates. Um, I have an announcement. 
Go ahead. Okay. Uh, P- Peace Train is number four on the soundtrack for Remember the Titans. Okay, so it's, I, I then it's it definitely it there. It's at the it's part there. you it's guys talked about. Now I feel like an asshole. Um, it, it's 100% it, it, that scene. If you're cross-mojo nation, go back and listen to our episode on Colt Classics Podcast <laughs> of Remember the Titans. It's probably one of the favorite ones we did. Who's to say? It was a while ago, so who knows how good it it's was. probably shitty also in, in ki- comparison. Also in kid news, I have a story coming to you from NPR. So uh, these kids made a boat. Uh, these Norwegian students ha- made a handcrafted boat in 2000. It, blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to get a date here. Sorry. Okay, so these Norwegian kids made a handcrafted boat for a school project. And 462 days later, and more than 8,300 miles, it made it across the ocean. And it was found on a different shore. Oh, sorry. I read this story. They just like launched a boat. Nobody was on it and yeah. just let it drift. Nobody was on it. Like, out of popsicle yeah. sticks or like a real fucking boat? They essentially, no, it's like a, no, it's like a wood boat. They like construct the boat. How big is the boat? Like is it canoe uh, size? Throw it up here for you. It's not, yeah, it's like a canoe size. Fine size boat. With a sail on it. Yeah, yeah. So it's essentially a time capsule where they put a bunch of stuff in from the class, some letters, just to see where it ended up. They thought it just got destroyed because it disappeared for so long, but it was eventually discovered in. Do we have where this was discovered? Uh, wow, they are not giving me how, a lot how of How much later? What was the this. time frame? Uh, uh, Over a year later. 400, yeah, 462 days and 8,300 miles. Wow. Uh, it, okay, and it ended up in Massachusetts in oh. October. Oh. And of 2020, so quite the accomplishment of those Cross kids. Cross the Atlantic. Yeah, these fucking uh, Norwegians over here send us over a boat. That's I a don't want to be stereotypical. That's not too bad. But that sounds very Norwegian, right? You know, launch what, a, making a making boat, a boat, and boat and launching it. The Norse. Careful, man? careful. They're my neighbors to the north. And Mark is saying that because he lives in, um, damn it, I don't know geography <laughs> enough. I was really going to kill it there because he lives in, no, I know you're it's just Denmark. Denmark. <laughs> Denmark. Now, Mark, do you remember a while back? I don't know if this was for the High Wire podcast or what, but I had a news story about some kangaroos on the loose, and they were like, I think that the headline was kangaroos back in jail. I have another kangaroo story for you. Um, this is coming to us from AP News. Danish police seek info on apparent escaped kangaroo. So don't know why this is happening again. Uh, police in East Denmark on Monday appealed for public help to track down what appeared to be a kangaroo filmed hopping across a field. Now, if you remember a couple of months ago or weeks ago, I don't even remember, there were two kangaroos that escaped from like a rinky-dink shit zoo somewhere in like the south. And I believe they were just captured and put in containment again. But now across the sea in Denmark, similar thing. Um... It's been spotted in Germany, so maybe this thing's gotten really far. I'm not going to look into this anymore, but it just blows my mind that within like two months, we have two kangaroos escaping from containment. Let's just maybe stop putting kangaroos in jail. Do you know how like when you when you click on articles or or videos, you get more and more of those articles and videos because of the <laughs> algorithm? Do you think that yeah. you just click on a lot of kangaroo stories? You're like, I can't believe there's another kangaroo story coming up. Yeah, you you, you started. My feet is nothing but kangaroo stories. He started I like, I've got I'm... a kangaroo story for you. And I think they're for you, my friend. <laughs> Sounds like, yeah, they might be for you. Um, I mean, if that's the case, I believe I've heard the only two kangaroo stories probably out there right now. But So <laughs> if it made it to another country, nobody's like, nobody's Working looking for this kangaroo, it. right? They're like, yeah, it's a kangaroo. Or we've all seen enough videos online to know I'm not going to approach that kangaroo because it's going to punch me or kick me a bunch. I don't want anything to do with that. What are you going to do? I saw a video of a kangaroo recently on, like, what do they call vines now? Reels or Instagram stories or TikTok, whatever. Whatever reels. it is. Yeah, whatever yeah. The, new, uh, the new social media is. Um, hmm. A guy's dog was getting attacked by a kangaroo, and he came oh, up, yeah. and he this is not slapped a new video. the kangaroo. Oh, is this real, though, is what I'm asking? I assumed you guys have oh, seen yeah. it. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's just it's real. If you real. slap a kangaroo, it'll get taken aback and let you go with your dog. He didn't smack it. He gives it Punch, a right okay. jab and just punches it in the face. Yeah. And then it kind of looks like, oh, no one's ever done this before. And it just hops away. It got really taken aback. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It got punched. Like, oh, my God. I undersold it. Ugh. Um, the last uh, news story I have uh, that's worthwhile, it's once again, and I think you're right about the algorithms. Because <laughs> ding, 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 ding. We have a Guinness Book of World Record oh, on our okay. hands here. We've had a bunch of those. Uh, Israel, this is coming to us from Israel, but uh, it's the world's heaviest strawberry. It's coming in at 10.19 ounces, which doesn't seem like much to me. Here's a picture of it if you guys want to glance. It looks pretty gross. It just kind of looks a like a misshapen. That's strawberry, though. That looks like a big tomato or a small pumpkin. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's about the size of a tomato. It looks like it would fit in the palm of your hand. It looks a little uh, brown, though. It doesn't look great to eat. Uh, weighing in at a whopping 289 grams, or 10.19 ounces, uh, the Titanic Berry this week was declared the world's largest by Guinness Book of World Records. Um, what do you think the turnaround blah, blah. time is at? Did they just freeze it and, like, let it defrost? Like... <clears throat> Because it's going to go bad in actually, I guess, yep. a week. That's actually, that actually gives us an answer to why it looks so great. That was actually frostbite. Uh, coming here from the family, we waited a year for the results, and we kept it in the oh. freezer for a year. Okay. So it's no longer as pretty as it was when it originally popped out. That's why it looks so messed up. Uh, the supersized strawberry is a local variety, so that's now, also Jordan, why it looks a little different. Uh, ne- your next update, I hope the baby is the size of a supersized strawberry. We're definitely bigger than. And a I have strawberry. absolutely no idea the growth pattern of this, but I mean, I'd say I'm about, I'm about Megan and the baby are about two. Anything I say is I'm not, I'm not doing no, anything. No, you're pregnant. You're I, pregnant. We're pregnant. She's pregnant. You're weird. Yeah, you got to start saying weird. I fucking That's hate that. Even though I know it's a thing, I fucking I, hate that. I don't think we are. I mean, I'm fine. She's having a tougher go at it because she's pregnant. <laughs> Like I did, I did impregnate her. I'm not gonna say anything. That Jesus good. Christ! We made a baby together. That was that was collectively. What how about we're doing. how about just Megan's pregnant and I'm helping? I, I, very little, as much as I can, emotional it's like, support. It's, it's like yeah. shake and bake. I made dinner and I helped. Uh, one thing I'm trying not to do, and I was warned about this uh, from our mom, Cameron. Uh, she's like, don't mm-hmm. don't gain a lot of weight like Dad did, and he's like, what are you talking about? And I guess he gained 20 pounds when Jessica was, uh, when our oldest sister I mean, I, was made. I'm from, I understand that's fairly common, just some sympathy weight. Uh, I'm trying not to, no, I'm I, trying I, not I to do would. it, but you know. He's going to hit that regimen even harder now, I mean. Oh, just speaking of being gluttonous, last night I got that uh, Little Caesars Batman pizza that has a tail and a head of a calzone. It looks horrific. That. It looks dumb. Here's that. Here's what I'm going to say, though, actually. I don't know about that pizza particularly, but last night was the best Little Caesars pizza I've ever had. It was delivered, but it was bready. It was like the cheese was still pulling, and it was, like, warm. I don't know what was going on that night. but You like, do, like, a bready just, pizza. That is not a, oh, I love that's it. Not oh, a I love check a mark pizza. that I – that's not a check – it's not a box that I want to check off when I'm thinking pizza. I don't want, like, a bready, bready pizza. Oh, I love it. I want it to be like I'm just eating some French bread with some cheese and sauce. Yeah, I on know it. you do. <laughs> I lo- I like a bready pizza. I like a thin pizza. I just like pizza. So, Mark, you don't like those stuffed pizzas, which are essentially like two huge pieces of bread with pizza in the middle. Wait, what like you, a deep dish? That? It's kind yeah, of like a deep dish, but it's got like, or like crust stuffed on crust. top end. But no, oh, I don't know oh, if I've ever had one of those. I think Talk. you're describing a calzone pizza pie. Mm. Which you're in luck because that pepperoni calzone is that Batman pizza, and those are calzones for the head and the tail. And no, it was the, very so bready, the pizza, very the pizza looked delicious. I, I just think the way they assemble it doesn't look like the bat sing, signal at all. Like it looks, oh, it's gross. it looks horrible. Yeah, it doesn't look great. But again, it is called the like pepperoni calzone Batman pizza. <laughs> that looks like never, a deep oh. dish. But it's yeah, not. Well, it's it's prettier. Like, anyway, I'm I'm showing those guys a stuffed pizza. It's not a deep dish. I'm not going to come oh, across a stuffed. I, Okay, yeah. So it's essentially like crust on the top and bottom instead of cheese. Everything's yeah. on the inside. Uh, how do you guys feel about thin crust? Because I do love it. It's just oh, it's the I, best. I, I that's, eat, that's what pizza is. I could eat a whole one on my own. Those. Yeah. I don't like oh, crispy yeah. thin crust. Uh, the thinnest I, I want to go is like New York style. If you consider that thin crust, which I don't, that's that's as thin as I want to go. What do you guys feel about Detroit? Your your Pizza Hut like pan style. I like I lo- it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm good. My only downside is it's just so much greasier just because, like, literally the, the – So I like a I like a Detroit, like, deep dish. I like a, a, a pan type of pizza. I just don't like the double dough, like, type of – I don't know. Sarpino's kind of gets into that into that realm. It seems like no matter I what you it. want, you, you, you want your crust to be a little crispy, Mark. Is that what we're going for? Cameron, yeah. yeah. Didn't you just have, like, a, an allergy test where you're, you're alluded to, like, cheese and gluten and – Oh no! It turns out <laughs> tomato I sauce, it was lact- pepperoni, and I, uh, everything on a pizza well, no, pie. I thought I was lactose intolerant all this time, but it turns out I have like a grain. I have like a wheat and a rye and a grain issue. But I was thinking about it, and anytime I had dairy, it was like cereal, pizza. It was like just like cheese and crackers. I guess my like point is, I love that you just went all out and got the Batman pizza last night. Oh, oh it, last night. It just occurred yeah, to me that, that why this is promotional. There's a new Batman movie coming. I'm like, why the fuck are... What's Little Caesars? Yeah. Why now? Why? It also came with a glitter poster of Catwoman. Cool. Cool. How do you yeah. guys think that one's going to be? You, you excited about the new Batman or not? Uh, here's here's why the I real question. Are you okay? excited enough to Pe- see it in the theater? I bet you fucking won't. I bet people won't see it in the theater anymore. 
Maybe, and here's why. One, I I think Robert Pattinson was annoying as the whole Edward Cullen Twilight thing. It's not his fault. What his, was he going to do? Yeah, I know. Well, I'm just saying, he, he, he's a really, he is a good actor, and I think he could do something with this. One, I hear it's getting, like, the, I forget what it's called, like, the criteria, like, the criteria, like, it's being, like, viewed as, like, acclaimed. the Joker. Yeah, it's, like, being critically acclaimed, like, the Joker, and not as, like, these action movies where they're... It does look a little well, darker. Feel, well, it got some sort of word, like, it's a criterion something piece where it's uh. saying, like, this is actually up as, like like a higher like level of movie higher caliber so between i'm I'm rooting for robert pattinson and i'm rooting for this to be like just a good like dark the, drama the only thing that i i will say that i've seen from it that i'm not too i'm not too i don't know if excited is the right word but the the riddler looks weird i'm used to the G- jim carrey riddler mm-hmm. from batman forever so like right all right a little, a little something always, campier it's always hard when the characters change like that too, just from your childhood and what you're used to. But so, what you, Jordan's about to pull something up here. What you oh, got? Oh, just the director. I can't tell if this is what he's direct. Oh no, this is the composer. Never mind. Shut up, Jordan. Where the <laughs> hell is the back. director? So speaking of like just algorithms a second ago and weird stuff, I'm getting my only like TikTok news is just I've been getting. I'm, I'm skipping them too, so I don't know why they're giving me so much. But I've been getting a lot of funny gun range accident videos where it's people like. <laughs> Almost, yeah. We're like hit misfires. Like funny, yeah. It's, that's why it was the heavy quotes. Like it's people like misfiring and hitting himself in the head, or almost looking down the barrel and it goes off. And like, it's not funny. It just makes me so sweaty, and I hate it. And I skip them right away. But like, my phone has just been filling up with them. I can't stop it. I don't know. It's just that and cute. Pets how do you think? Aliens. How do you think the algorithm works? Is it like? If you like something, then that's going to continue to get in your feed, or is it for like you kind of like watch it for like a little over ten seconds, or like it's a hundred percent that. But have you ever also just like spaced off and the video's been going on like ten seconds of like watch me hit this balloon, watch me hit this balloon, and you're just not paying attention? So I've definitely given some assholes like some higher views than they deserve. A couple kangaroo, but, a couple kangaroo. Skips. Are you are you willing to say <laughs> what your uh, a guilty pleasure is? I because I have an example for myself. Of like sure. dumb videos, you're like, I can't believe I'm still watching this. Mine is um, haircuts and makeovers for guys. I'm like, I'm gonna go to my TikTok right now and see what pops up. First. I watch a lot That's... of, and it ends up being just like somebody with curly hair that they straighten their hair. And they're like, look, they're Funny totally enough, different. I'm like, it seems like a lot of work. Why would you do that? That's that's something that comedian Burt Kreischer often talks about, that he's just really into watching Puerto Rican men get their hair cut. Mine end up seeming to be like a lot of Indian guys or like Middle Eastern guys. They're straightening their hairs. I don't know why, what I got into. Mine's, I remember there was a while. Do you remember the when people were like blending in those toupees in their hair? Do you guys remember oh, those Oh, I watched that a lot. Though? It seems like worth it. You look way better. Yeah, I would, well, but it has to be so funny when your hair just grows out on the side and the top never changes, though, right? I think the real fear would be, you know, it's going to come off someday. Well, like, I mean, eventually you know, it does out come off. Do you just off. own it? But like, yeah, I got a toupee, but don't I look better with a toupee? Fuck it. I mean, you have to because the other option is just going <laughs> and running away covering your head with a jacket. That's definitely an option, though. <laughs> That's option two. It might be option one, probably. Owning it I mean, would it take a lot go-to. of gumption. Are you guys toupee guys? Are you like hair club for men guys? Or are you just like go bald? Like what are we doing here? If I if I have the money and I can go to a good place, I'm plugs. I just would like to have it back. But I think I'd just be an own it, shave it, get into hats, Samuel L. Jackson style. Just try to get some like you know fashionable hats in there instead of just my baseball hat. I'd like to believe that I would just shave it, but I think I'd hold on forever. What's like, a hairstyle? Make it weird on everybody. <laughs> that you wish you could have, but you're just never going to do. Like, you're, you can never pull it off. Like, what's a hairstyle that you, you'd love to have? I just wish my hair was a little wavier, because I'm essentially going for, like, your your Bradley Cooper, Timothy Chalmay of, like, just kind of slicking it back, like, mid-length. But yeah. my hair is just a little too straight. It has some wave to it, but not quite as much as I'd like. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm in the same boat with that. My hair is pretty straight, so I just, my hair doesn't look good long. So I would say, for me, it's that I'd, I'd want, like, straight. So it's like, if you got curly hair, you want straight hair. If you got... If you've got straight hair, you want curly hair. I'd say the, makes the real bu- bullet the I dodged is, always greener. is because uh, because we grew up, we have straight hair. If I would have had curly hair as a kid, like in middle school when like uh, Alan Iverson was the most popular person on earth, I'd be like, I probably would have tried cornrows out and really, really, really <laughs> regretted those. I'm 35 now, so like I obviously know that that's bad and that's cultural appropriation. But at, sure. at, at 12 or 13 in Manchester, Iowa... I'd be like, yeah, I got cornrows. It's the coolest thing. And I think I'm not the only one. Go and Google Justin Timberlake. White people were doing it, and it's, it's, I'm just lucky that I avoided that and that I didn't and have that as an option. that's why you can't get a tattoo until 18 or after legally. Oh, Jordan, yeah. Jordan, Jordan just posting had... people up in, in seventh grade basketball with a do-rag. <laughs> like, I'd oh, step nice. over people. You know? 
Just whipping people in the eyes with your beaded hair. <laughs> well, I would. I don't think I would have had the step back jumper, step over. Uh, it's like Jurassic Park with the water shaking, but instead they can hear the jangle of you approaching. So, Cameron, you have a tattoo. You got it. Couple before you have tattoos. You got them before you were eighteen. At least one of them, right? Uh, one when I was seventeen. One when I was eighteen. Do you yeah. regret any of those decisions now that you're an adult? Do you think eighteen's a safe enough age? Because I think it's probably not a real good age to make a decision like that. It's still pretty young, but I made sensible choices. I was never one that wanted to get like just funny or joke tattoos. I have like my family crest, and I have a muse on my arm. Well, they then, both look, I mean, pretty. Yeah, they've aged pretty well, and I, you know, yeah, cla- yeah. Know, like the domino just has to fall then, because if you can't, you know, you, you can go to war, you can choose where you want to take your career at that age. So it's like, oh, got you, the eighteen. I know, but yeah, I, I don't mean, think you should be like going to war at eighteen. You're no, like, I, hmm, no, I not, don't either. That's a racist too. I think that's too young. <laughs> Maybe make that. Jordan, make every, I'm it, with you. If you can't, I've heard you say this before. Go ahead. Oh no, no, go ahead. I was just gonna say the real bar is like you can't rent a car until you're 25. There's a reason because you're really irresponsible before that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's like you probably shouldn't be able to make those other decisions. Now as an adult, I think. What are some uh, t- tattoos you would have gotten as a child if you would have been able to? Covered in like money a- signs. Covered in Superman signs. Covered in that dumb S you draw. <laughs> I would have had the affinity. I would have had the sussy thug life a hundred percent for sure. When I was in seventh grade, like when I wanted tattoos, Superman was cool. Shaq has a Superman tattoo, but he's you know covered in tattoos now. So I would have just had a Superman that I had to deal with. It's actually funny. This this goes on to a category. Um, you may remember if you're listening along at home from our last. Um, Urban Hermit, I was going to go to a water park. I was going to go to an indoor water park, Noah's Ark, which I did. I'll report. Nice. They're fun as a 35-year-old. I had nieces and nephews like on Megan's side, so I got to like go down slides and stuff and not just be a weirdo adult. Did a lot of Lazy River. That was fun. You know what's not fun? Wave pools. They just suck. They're not fun at all. I, I've heard bad things. It's a lot of work. You're, of either, you're either too shallow and you're just getting hit by wave again and again. There's or, a time and place for a wave pool. I like a good wave pool. I didn't like being around people. If I had like a private wave pool to myself, oh I yeah, think like they, they have the beach. tendency to get crowded. Like a crowded wave pool, you could die in there. Yeah, that's what I was dealing with. So my wave pool experience wasn't wasn't great. But to go on to tattoos, it's weird that uh, <laughs> you can you can see when somebody got their tattoo. You're like, oh yeah, you got your tattoo in 1999. Oh, you got your tattoo in 2004. You know what I mean? They do seem True. to unless you go full like arm. Sleeve and everything's covered. You can still pick out like, oh well, you're obviously trying to cover up that tribal from like. Tw- sure, but there, I get what Jordan's saying. There's a difference between like a tattoo artist you get from a small town that's like a a, a Daffy Duck or like a Tweety Bird, for sure. and then like some like nice traditional tattoo from a guy who's been doing it for 23 years or whatever. That popped up on my page earlier. Would you ever get like a photorealistic tattoo somewhere on you? The ones that just look crazy realistic? I don't like those. I the guy was good. Yeah. I would. We used to know a guy, shout out if he's still doing it, Benjamin Duarte back in the day. Remember uh, Tommy's friend? He was doing uh, yeah. some of that. He was doing really good stuff. Did he? he so is that pretty much, do you think that's pretty much what they do, what that guy does now? Oh, yeah. I tried to get an appointment with him, but he was like booked a year out. And I was like, well, okay, and well. like it was probably like two grand for it. Yeah, it was yeah, it was a lot. I mean, it's an art piece being um, put on you, so I mean, they charge. The style of tattoo I like um is just it's just aesthetically it wouldn't mean anything to me i like you know like the old black and white tattoos that are like that jordan's like so, some sort of uh, i don't know uh tribal or barbed wire <laughs> who doesn't <laughs> like barbed like wire? something I mean, aesthetic no i uh no i uh, i don't know anything i got tattoos be like i like the way it looks but it's like the way i like a way a shirt looks you know what i mean like i shouldn't have this on every day I mean, that's part of it, too, if it looks cool. Like, Mark's, Mark's talked about getting, like, an old-timey, like, wooden ship or, like, some sort of like flag ship. ship. Yeah. yeah. That, that, could, that could look cool if it's done right. I mean, Chris, our guitar player, has a compass on his arm. That's, like, more a little bit more of a common one. But, like, again, if it's if it's done well, it, looks, it just looks cool. I think I, you have to start with, like, something that is kind of meaningful and maybe, but then you can kind of add some sort of silly ones, some Friday the 13th small ones. Like, nowadays, like, all these celebrities, like, they're just putting these dime-sized, like, Whatever is all over all yourself. of their hand, yeah, just all over themselves. So yeah, I, I I like to put a little more forethought into mine. Not that I mean, if people want to do that, that's yeah, fine. That's yeah, like, for sure. It's your I'm own not thing. saying yeah. I'll never get a tattoo because I, I very well could, you know, but I probably won't at this point. I did have one I've always thought of, but I don't like the source material enough. I just like the quote. Mm-hmm. I thought it'd be funny to get like you know how people do 
like a quote or Scri- text or like something script on their arms yeah yeah he's, he's like under forearm he's pointing to, to my yeah i always thought it'd be funny to get no work and all work and no play just like on your whole forearm <laughs> but i don't like the shining enough to make it but i i wish somebody who Ooh. did like it that'd be a good you're one. you're definitely gonna have to wear long sleeves to job interviews <laughs> yeah, like, uh, jordan i just thought of a good one for you like imagine like this this <laughs> this fucking awesome peace sign and then busting right through the center of it is just a locomotive train. How would you describe Peace that train. in song if you could do? And I've been like, been. what would a priest train sound like? <laughs> real, real shaky. I know that. Train. I think he's shaky in a lot of songs. We're talking Cat Stevens. Welcome to Cat Stevens course, Corner yes. uh, again. I think most of his songs are shaky, but that's his shakiest, <laughs> and that's why it's the best. It's up there. Come on, a peace train. <laughs> um, we're going to a Bulls game tomorrow. That's gonna be fun. Oh, that's yeah. exciting! Yeah, make sure to bring your Vax card. Make sure to have all of your stuff oh, with you. Yeah, Don't fun. forget. Do you know that hey, we're but- only like four days away from that ending? Yeah, Monday. Yeah, yeah. Damn, I which wish is a little it, scary, but sure. No, Matt. We're, well, Chicago's down to. I don't want to get all fucking COVID right now, but we're down to like one sure. point something percent, like. COVID. I haven't been following it at all, to be honest. So cool. <clears throat> that's that's good. I, I'm, good. I'm excited to go to the Bulls game tomorrow. I haven't seen. Last game I saw Joe Kim Noah was like going and ripping boards. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah it's been a while for me too. Derek now, Rose had you. two functioning legs and ankles and knees. Yep, <laughs> we're right at the teetering point where like the tickets are going to get crazy expensive. I feel like we we went to a good game. We're like we're getting decent seats. We paid like the right price for them. I think so. It's gonna I be think fun. just to let you guys know we're seeing the Hawks if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. playing the Atlanta Hawks. I think we picked out of the games available without being a premier game. Like we're not going to see the Warriors we're not going to see LeBron we're not going to see Giannis those games just get jacked up by $100 just general admission I think for the price point we have we're going to see a pretty good competitive game that hopefully the Bulls will win plus we're just coming off the all-star break so most people should be playing since that dunk contest sucked I didn't. I didn't, I didn't even, even watch, watch it. it on this one. Yeah. It's because you you would have seen highlights if it was good. There weren't any good highlights. That's it just true. sucked. I uh, who won it? Something top? Some guy from the Knicks? I don't know. Ain't remember. no stopping Obi Toppin. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah, he was like the number third pick. I don't know if he's a bust, but he must be on that way since this is the last. Uh, this is the people most wanted I've heard him about, on the Bulls. Who'd we end up getting? I think we got a good team though. I don't know how we're drafted, but yeah, I'm excited. I think we're gonna pull it out tomorrow. We're gonna win, and I'm excited Let's to have. And this is weird. A Budweiser heavy. I'm gonna. Have I was a just about to bed. ask what what uh, I mean. Are you guys getting a hot dog? Are you getting nachos? Are you getting one of those ice cream cups? What are we getting here? Any chance I can get a big warm pretzel? I'm gonna get myself. a Cameron big warm is a pretzel, pretzel guy. So. Are you? Mu- I love a, mustard I love pretzel, cheese. Man. Whatever. I, I mean, I'll do anything. I'll Dude, do it all, baby. That you just do it at a bar pretzel. or just sporting a, pretzels? Are great. Will you do an appetizer at a bar, like a brewery pretzel. You into those? Yeah, I do that all the. I do that all the time. Yeah, these are coming like pretzel bites form. Pretzel bites are great. Um, I cheese. myself am, uh, to quote the legendary uh, James Earl Jones, dog and a beer. Dog and a beer. You can't go dog wrong and a beer. That's, That's a classic want. stadium. I'll tell you the one thing I'm just not looking forward to tomorrow. It seems like you guys are taking public transit in. I will have to drive just coming from the suburbs and not looking forward to finding out whatever Park, the United uh, Center parking situation is. Do you want to... Do you want to park up by me and we can like Uber or something or we can oh, you maybe, but that. like I get off work at six. So like, I won't get there until like, probably like what time is the game? Like seven, we're, so we're just doing planning right now, but what? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, listen yeah, we'll, to those yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? Actually, let, let's cut this one. We're going, we're, we're going pretty good today. Uh, I got to go grocery shopping. Actually. Anyway, I got to run some errands, wow. uh, but thanks for checking out urban hermit. Make sure you check out all the other podcasts, cult classics, high wire podcast, all the good stuff. And uh, follow us on social media at, at Urban Hermit Podcast. And we'll check you guys next time. We'll check you, check you next time, everybody. Check you next time. Bye. Bye.